So this is my personal opinion about the Lord of the Rings set, which is Universe Beyond. Now we saw Transformers, but the Transformers were not, we saw Godzilla, we, we have different Universe Beyond products, um, but this is the first time there is, you know, a draft, there's a set, there's a collector's, and then there's also a uh, jumpstart even. I'm sure that there's commander decks. I haven't seen them on the order list, but I've seen everything else. And these are going for 200 plus dollars a box, depending on what box you pick. And it doesn't look cheap. Now I understand I'm a patent attorney. There is a licensing fee that you have to pay the owners. The uh, owners are Lord of the Rings. But uh, with that being said, it does the artwork not really for me, not really in the art, art style that I per particularly like, but that's me. Uh, what I can see is this is becoming more and more like Weiss and Weiss is very dangerous because Weiss, if their anime is not popular and you don't really know too much about anime, you could end up with a lot of boxes of it, like uh, Alpha Investments. And then you're just like, oh, I don't know why this is not selling. Um, and even in my example, you know, when you're actually basing it on the IP of not magic products, right? Not So it's not magic's IP, it's Lord of the Rings, right? It's magic's mechanical system. It, it reminds me a lot of Weiss, okay? It, it's a lot like Weiss. Uh, and in Weiss, there are sets that are worth a ton of money and there are sets that are worth no money. And it is, if, you, if, if you play in the Weiss field, you're going to know this, for example. The newest sets have all failed. Uh, starting from FGO Camelot, which again, I thought was a very popular set. FGO, how could you go wrong? The previous FGO sets did very well. Okay, let's buy a few uh, pallets of this stuff, right? And it failed. There's no doubt in my mind, FGO Weiss set failed. I, I, don't, I don't really know what you had. Sanjan, which I like, I personally like, like her. Um, you got the Lion King. You know, but it failed. Uh, there's no other way to say it. Boxes are selling for uh, $40 when they initially come out. They sell for $60 or $70 or $80 on pre-order. Uh, cases sell for a thousand pre-order distribution price. So whenever a case is under a thousand dollars, then you're really like, uh, you're kind of in trouble. That's what Lord of the Rings Universe Beyond is like. And if you don't really love Lord of the Rings, you could be stuck with a lot of dead product. And that is what's worrying. I'm sure Lord of the Rings would do well because it's the first kind of universe beyond concept. So they had to really push it out. But I, I could imagine, okay, we have uh, Dracula or something. We have a new Twilight movie or My Little Pony. And people are getting really hyped. People get real hyped. Then you buy into it as a game store owner and then nobody buys it. And now you're, you're left with a product that no one wants. And this happens in Weiss all the time. Where, you know, typically, I mean, even Kagora, I don't know any of these animes, so I, I'm trying to remember, but the last few sets have been very awful in Weiss. Uh, now there's some, you know, is it a hot stamp issue versus signature issue? Is there like an issue of the power level? Whatever the issue is, there is an issue. Now you move over to um, Magic and you do something that is very unique, like Lord of the Rings. You don't know, I mean, I could see this bankrupting a lot of, you know, they go all in, they get hyped up, they buy a bunch and they can't sell it. And then suddenly you're actually narrow, your niche is very, very small. So magic as a niche already is kind of small in the entertainment section. It's, it's a card game, which is already a niche within the entertainment, right? And then on top of that, you're saying people who play Magic or people who like Lord of the Rings enough to just collect the cards for $400 a box. Um, does that demographic even exist? And does it exist at a premium? Because that's the price that you're paying for it. So Lord of the Rings, Universe Beyond, I am very skeptical of. Now, I'm not saying it's not gonna work. They always push it to make the first set work, right? But what I am saying is, man, like I look at this, I think about it, and it reminds me a lot of Weiss. A lot of different IPs have their own little sets and they all sell, and then with, with that type of um, segregation, 
it depends on the fan base. You know, like, and I thought FGO would be a home run. I thought these cases of FGO would be worth a lot more money than they are worth today. They're actually selling for less than the $1,000 a case, which is kind of, I that's like a simple, it's actually less than that, but it's a simple like number to remember when you're buying from your distributor of 1,000, that if you can sell a case for 1,000, you're making enough money for it to be worth it. And now, now in, in, when you're invest, quote, investing in magic, now in, instead of just you know, thinking how, what the set is gonna be like, now you gotta think about the IP for Universe Beyond, and if the IP is strong enough to support people buying it in the future. So I, there's no doubt in my mind that these Lord of the Ring cards will be quite valuable in the future because it's Lord of the Rings, right? I'm just saying in the future, if there is another IP that may not be as strong, then, and then people get really hyped because then the demographic who likes it, they're very vocal online. This is the vocal minority idea where, you know, the people who are shouting, you know, on, they're shouting things all the time. They're actually not shouting the main, they're not, the silent majority who buys most of the stuff. They're not in, you know, so vocal about what they're buying. They're just buying it because they enjoy it. Um, while the vocal minority is like, complaining about this and that and this, and you understand what it is, right? It's like Twitter. I see this being very dangerous for game store owners because if you, if you buy, like, let's say that you think, oh, My Little Pony is going to take off to the moon, and then they have a My Little Pony set, they have draft set, and you're buying, you put your entire egg investment into the My Little Pony set, and it doesn't sell. You, there's plenty of times players tell me, I want to buy this, I want to buy, and they don't, they don't pre-order, and they don't buy. And you're like, why do you tell me that? Like, you know, it doesn't help you at all, and it doesn't help me. They just want to be vocal. Like I, there is a subset of players who are incredibly vocal about their fan bases and they don't buy nothing. While the majority of players who aren't going to be as vocal, they buy everything. And it's very interesting. You need, you, you want, you, again, you don't want to silence the vocal minority because that would be very bad, right, in today's society. But at the same time, you don't want to always buy what they're telling you to buy because they won't buy it. I, I flat out tell you, the louder somebody is about a product, the more unlikely they're going to be to buy the product <laughs> from my experience. Anyway, let me know um, if you're going to buy Lord of the Rings. Um, it looks good. I, I'm probably going to buy a little bit on Amazon when it goes on sale. I am not buying no more from my distributor, actually. I'm just not buying anymore. I, I told him, hey, you got to cut me off from Magic because your prices suck. He's like, okay, okay. So I'm actually buying baseball cards now. <laughs> it's so weird. But it's, it's fun to open. I enjoy opening it. Hi guys.